Thanks for staying with us. Now, if we are complaining about traffic jam, we have no one to blame but ourselves. That's our quote. So we, with the recent vandalism that we witness across the nation, it is safe to say that Lagos State was the worst hit as we saw traffic lights destroyed, public buses completely burnt down, bus stations raised down, and even last month offices burnt to the ground alongside police stations. Now, the direct consequence of our actions in the unbearable is sorry is the unbearable gridlock that we are facing moving from point a to point b so how do we bring back sanity or some sense of sanity back on our roads now let us hear what you have to say remember you can join this conversation tweet at us at plus tv africa or at wish africa with the hashtag wish show or you send us an sms or whatsapp to 081 803 i'll bring in our guest in one minute but isi how do you think we can bring back sanity on our roads? Hmm. That's a tough question because really? the people are actually a reflection of the government. And currently, I don't think we are, we are, we are sane. Okay. <laughs> really? We are not sane, Abi. <laughs> <Because, laughs> we are not sane. With all due respect to the government, basically everything has turned upside down. Yeah. We do not have some, some level of sanity in everything we do currently Everybody just everybody's wants... everybody's trying to do one or two things you you are going out of the house you're apprehensive you, the individuals everybody are trying to the commuters are trying to get to wherever they're going to mm -hmm. and in the process there is always some sort of gridlock or the other ah, so that even if you talk if the, even if the last man is trying to talk to the individual or the commuter you find out that they are actually sh um, throwing words at each other in one way or the other ah, so this well Okay, well, so we're going to bring it. is a tough one <laughs> right now, especially in the situation we found ourselves in Nigeria. Absolutely. So, EC said we are all not sane. Ah. We all actually do need psychological evaluation. Absolutely. That's one I agree. That's one I agree. Alaji De Odudoye is, <laughs> is the general manager, Lagos State Traffic Management Authority, and he's joined us tonight live in studio. Thank you so much for joining us, Ogami. I'm happy to have you here. So now... Um, two, was it two weeks to the protest or a week to the protest? I saw a video that was sent to me that went viral. Uh, it was a week. It was a week to the protest Absolutely. where you, you just dished out serious warning and it was almost, it was a riot act you read for all your officials and all of that. So mm -hmm. fast forward after the protest, I now saw that so many things that you had warned against, you know, you know, it played out almost like you had first hand information that this was going to happen, blah, blah, blah. You know, why did, why did that video, why were you prompted to share that video? First of all, maybe we should start from there. Well, what it was, it's, um, I needed to go and attend a medical situation and then I'd gone out, there was a, a crash. There was a crash on the Kara Bridge, as usual, about Ted Ola Bridge. It was a big fire with tank and everything. And um, I was called and I was lying in bed and um, I just thought, oh my God, I know CMD Junction, because I'm in Magoto, right? So I know the express on CMD was going to be clogged up, and it was going to make it worse. Mm. And CMD was very critical to allow traffic to move to bypass where the accident has happened. Mm -hmm. So I just jumped out of bed. I didn't even have a bath, put my clothes on. Boom, I dashed out to the gate, and I went to the junction, start controlling traffic. I was there. Everything was fine. Everything was cool. I was there two and a half hours. The next thing as I was just managing it, managing it. Some people now decided, you know what? It's not good enough for them. They now started coming one way and block everything. Completely. Insanity. And so I had, um, I had a stick just to warn them. So when I tapped one guy in error without calculation, hmm. the, um, the screen cracked a little bit. And I said, I was sorry, can he go down, whatever. And the next thing now, he decided he was gonna beat me up. Wow. He took the stick, took my cap, took everything. It was so, and it was just like, we're going to deal with you. No fear, nothing whatsoever. Very aggressive. So when I got home, and I'm thinking, I'm the GM of last week. And if they could do that to they you. They could do that to me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I can be very, very calm. I can speak and I can communicate. And I can deal with issues. But they just went, I mean, just name it. Ballistic. Whether it is a uniformed person hmm. that did it, it was there. The commercial bus drivers that were there, the motorcyclists and private drivers. There was a guy that was driving a, an ML350, was a white one. And he dashed and he overtook 100 vehicles on CMD road against traffic. Wow. And I had to leave the junction to control and send him back. 
But of course, by the time I'm sending it back so I can say, listen, you can't do this. All the people that are... have been begging here that I thought they were sane hmm. just turned insane immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I got home, I just thought, hold on a second. I don't have time to gather officers together um, on the Monday. So I just had that inspiration. Let me just talk to them because this is the way I felt on that Saturday afternoon. And if that so. could happen to you and with, so no, you know, with no fear that this is the general manager, he's the boss of the entire structure. Mm -hmm. If that could happen to you, I could imagine what will happen to just and, you know, a, yeah. a regular officer on the road. On the and road. the people who know me around there were telling them. So it's not like, oh, we didn't know or whatever. Hmm. I had last mark up and everything. They were telling her that's a GM of last mark. Oh the point God. that one needs to make is, why is it that we cannot appreciate the effort that some people need to make? And that's the reason why hmm. you find ordinary citizens, they worry more about their own safety than come out to help. And that's why everything hmm. is locked down. Because that can happen. And people, people are just, I, I can't explain. And I don't want to use, I'm not bold enough to use the words that you've used, hmm. but yes, a lot of us need uh, to go back psychological to psychological yeah. evaluation. We, we do. We okay, do. you know, so, I like what you said. Sorry, um, Isi, when you said that, you know, what exactly would be the solution? And honestly speaking, it is in the bid to try to solve the problem. That was why we requested to have, you know, this show with you. You know, because for the past three weeks, it has been hell on the road, right? The and we have not even. We still don't understand that. I think maybe, maybe that mutual respect or whatever it is that is lacking that has caused us to get to where we are, you know, how do we even, where do we start from, you know, if we say we want to, because I think maybe you should tell us how far the destruction went. Maybe some people might not have heard what, I mean, how it uh, impacted last month. Because a lot of people thought it was just police that were affected. Mm -hmm. A lot of people thought it was BRT buses. Because I'm mm -hmm. thinking, if you're burning down BRT buses, for goodness sake, who are the people that are committing on BRT buses? Mm -hmm. So we have more cars on the road. Mm -hmm. We have less um, uh, trans transport structure to carry people around. So there is just chaos all over the roads. So tell us maybe how far the destruction has gone, mm -hmm. then we well, can build up from there. Well, before, before then, I think um, maybe this program will also allow us to plead with people. A lot of people overemphasize the small bad eggs that we have. And there are bad eggs in every situation that we have in this country, and even in other countries as well. But we tend to dwell on that. And my advocacy is, if you try your best not to offend, not to violate the law. The chances of any last smart officer taking advantage of your error will be totally reduced. You're the one mostly that invite LASMA to come and begin to apprehend and engage, which leads to extortion in some cases. And extortion itself is not like they were forced kind of thing. It's someone that's been told that you've offended, the fine for your offense is X. And then you turn around as the Nigerian factor sometimes, oh, what can you do? Mm -hmm. Then you now start negotiating for why. And then when you give the why, you now record, you get upset, and then you're not telling everybody around that, oh, the last month officer took why from me. Without saying what you did. Without saying what you did. Without even saying you're the one that instigated the negotiation. Mm -hmm. All right? But anyway, when the situation happened, we have about six zones burnt. And when I say zones, some zones, about five, are even in one area. So the Agege area was burned. Ojo do Bega, they went there, go crazy. Um, Uwuroshoki was done. Badagri was done. And I'm telling you, we went out on site with uh, management, and the destruction is unreal. I seen in some cases, they took toilet bowl oh, and yeah. the basin. They took it. So the only thing that you find in rubbles is just burnt wall and the roof, as in mm. they took everything. Some officers lost their certificates, they got mm. uniform, laptops, a whole lot of things burnt. Then they descended on the vehicles. So patrol vehicles burnt, towing vehicles burnt. Over about 20, and then I'm not even talking about private citizens' vehicles that, that were apprehended. Wow. Mm. So they just burnt it. But before they burnt them, they looted the vehicles. They took oh, steering they wheel. They yeah. took no, no. You know, vandalism <laughs> is when you break right. something in this anger. One, they, they took this one took the door. Everything. So they, in fact, they visited some of these zones the next day. That was just how rampant it was. So they took doors. They took bumper. They took steering wheel. Battery is I mean, that one standard. So Spare this parts. is calculated. And I'll ask one question. And I've been asking. And I'm not afraid. How come? 85 BRT buses burnt 
in this mayhem, and not a single yellow boss was burnt. Hmm. Hmm. That's, That's a, a very big thoughts. question. That's a very big question because right now, most of even the yellow bosses right now, they've hiked all their prices. Absolutely. You know? If we're that angry, if you're so angry as a youth, hmm. because we have youth one and we have youth two. Exactly. Youth mm. one is a cool youth one that gives food to you two. Mm. You two is enjoying the food and they decide youth one is not getting scared like this is not what we planned. You exactly. two is saying mm. you started a thing, mm. I ain't stopping. And mm -hmm. you took two took over. That's where we are. And so but the composition, so I'm glad the investigation is carrying is it's ongoing. Going on. And um, so the, the 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 motive has to be so that we can because when we're looking for a solution, because right now BRT buses have been burnt, right? And like you rightly said, if 85 buses have gone out and the other operators are scared to come out, hmm. then you have less public bus, mass bus transit to operate. The population so that those that were leaving their vehicles at home, creating some kind of semblance for traffic to flow a little hmm. bit, have not brought their cars back out on the road because they need to go to work, hmm. right? So why would you not have congestion? You will have congestion because the volume of traffic movement is much, much greater than the road capacity that we have. That can take. Wow. Now, if I may step in there, sir. There, you, you've talked about all, um, basically, the challenges of the commuters currently. So what about the challenges of LASMA? Well, you see, I think um, a lot of our people need to appreciate that um, just like we said about the government, it's the people. Mm -hmm. There's nothing called LASMA as if we're in the cloud. We are Nigerians. You're either Lagosian from Ukuse, from whatever part of Nigeria you are, you're Lasma. So you're first a Nigerian human being. Mm -hmm. And that Lasma person is probably got a wife or got a husband with children. Mm -hmm. They have the same blood, they feel the same way. So mm -hmm. when we come out onto the roads and we disrespect and we maim and we injure, because I got injured as well, it's just because it's been a while before when I got yeah. here. Yeah. Right? And you injure them and you abuse them. You see, you can abuse someone like me, one off, then I get upset, then I'm doing other things, mm -hmm. and I forget about it. But if every single day a Nigerian person who in his heart is helping the situation, and you keep on abusing and insulting him, and he has a wife at home, and you find one 22-year-old girl that is on the phone without using a seatbelt, mm -hmm. and you correct her like, Madam, put your seatbelt on. Get off the phone because you're not concentrating. And she goes, get out of here. Hmm. That man, it's a 45-year-old with a wife and children at home, he feels bad. And if he gets that constantly, every single day, hmm. there's a way it will affect your brain. So a lot of people keep on asking, why are last officers are so aggressive? They're aggressive because that is what you play out to them. Hmm. You're aggressive every single day because people say last should correct. Last is tired of correcting because the people you're correcting don't want any correction. Okay, mm -hmm. so I, I like what you've said now, because mm -hmm. I think, um, where do we as citizens play? What role do we play? Because you know why? I've driven in other parts of the world. I mean, there are some roads when you get to a junction, you know that it is the first person that got there. America, that would, even a yes. crossroad. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So the, the first person that gets there would have to go through the road. No hassle. No hassle. I even think that some of the roads, some of the places where we even have traffic light, we really don't need a traffic light if everybody understood the road usage and all of that. So how can we capitalize on, because I believe that there's always a positive in every negative situation. Mm. So now this thing has happened and we are already seeing it that now LASMA is more useful to us than we are to them. Because mm. if we don't have LASMA on the road, trust mm. me, nobody will be able to go anywhere. No, I have no. to turn back. Mm -hmm. to my house for I mean several times I just come out of my house there's mad traffic I just turn back into my house I can't do anything I can't transact my business nothing can happen mm -hmm. if the roads are completely blocked so how do we where so the role of the citizens right mm -hmm. uh, outside of trainings and all of that what would be a creative way to start to look at this thing holistically so that even after we have we've healed from all of this thing we are now able to be, uh, so we are better informed, first of all, mm. and we now understand the importance of everybody's role. How do we even start that? Well, I mean, you're, you're right. Um, there's a responsibility on all sides. Um, from last month's point of view, from management, you cannot stop training. 
because after a while, people forget what they're supposed to do, how they're mm -hmm. supposed to comport themselves and everything. And so training and retraining is very important. Even for those who have um, attained managerial position, you still mm -hmm. go for training. So there's no doubt about that. Um, another thing that needs to happen is for the government to look at the welfare of such officers, last more officers, mm -hmm. the police, the same with the police, mm -hmm. because the job is stressful. All right, and it, one way or the other, you they need to be compensated for that stress. Mm. And the other reason why you need to compensate them or to give them something extra is you now reduce the chances of them wanting to be entangled in money, money thing between an offender and themselves. Mm -hmm. Because if you have self respect, if you're okay, you don't need to get, allow somebody to disrespect you. So that needs to be looked at. However, the majority, uh, the major part that we all need to play is the people themselves, the drivers. And this program, the time that you have is not enough to break it down. Okay. And I must be honest with you. You can just give us right? synopsis. But I'm just saying to you that the way people are licensed to drive needs to be looked at yet again. Mm -hmm. We keep on talking about this for the past 20 years. I, don't, I haven't seen the difference per se, per se. Um, mm -hmm. The way we drive is an extension of the way we behave in other things. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example. Um, we have problem of um, people getting into university sports on merits. Okay. People have the psych that they must jump. When you go to the supermarket, even when there's a queue, somebody's always calculating how he's going to jump the queue. Mm -hmm. When you go anywhere, somebody's also is always planning to jump the queue. And that, by extension, goes onto the road. Now you now have a weapon because the vehicle, the car that you drive is a weapon. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't understand that the car is a weapon. So the way you use it could make somebody get injured or get killed. Last month officers have been killed by it around and drivers. And also human are beings have been killed and as well. Exactly. Citizens have been killed, right? yeah. So we drive on the road like we don't care, like we don't love ourselves. And then you find the average driver, including those that live in Banana Island, those that drive Range Rovers, those that drive Danfo, there's no difference between all of them. When you see all these people doing one way, mm. check the composition. The one that happened in Naja, we counted 200 vehicles about four days ago, 200 vehicles, there were only 15 commercial buses amongst them. The rest of them were big boys going to VGC. And they went on the opposite side of the lane, they didn't just take one. That is now the psych of an average Nigerian, which I cannot understand. Mm. They didn't, there are three lengths on the express, right? They didn't just take one and manage. Mm. They took the first one. So somebody from behind is thinking, hell, come on, you know, I've got a faster car. He now picks up the second one. And then this Range Rover, another car, now picks up the third one. Mm. They're now racing, and they now did complete block. Mm. Is that Lasma? I tell you, any Lasma except this Robocop, you stand in front of a vehicle that has chosen to drive against traffic, just know it's ready to kill you. Exactly. Because it does not have any intention of going back. And if you stand there as an obstruction, mm -hmm. it's going to mow you down because he knows there's a chance he can get away well, with Toga, it. Okay. That's <laughs> a Mr. Question. Audrey, yeah, there's a question. Yeah. We're going question. to take that question when we okay. come back from the break. But I was going to say that. You see, let me tell you something. Do you know how bad this traffic was this period? <laughs> Even Google Map. Uh. Eh? There was a day I was coming out of my, my, my house. Google Map told me to take one way. <laughs> <laughs> that was how bad it was. Google Map said take yes! one way. Yes, Google Map showed the lane to take, <laughs> and it was the on what the other way? side. Like it is terrible, you know, because you know you why know? Lagos. Like my Who is manipulating is Google Map in Nigeria? Yeah, I don't know. Uh -huh. well, you know why Lagos State Track uh, Road is bad? This Ekpe especially because this yeah. is the only lane. You know, if you're going to the mainland, you can go through Surulere, you can go through Ikorodu Road, you can go through different you have uh, options. routes. Yeah, options. Yeah. But you see, Lekki, Lekki Ekpe Expressway is just one lane. Yes. So if, it, if something happens, the entire road is completely shut down. <sighs> so what should we do? So you already know you have one door yes. in and out of your house. Yes. All right? You know. The children knows about it, your housemaid knows about it, the father, mom and dad knows about it. And then you now go and carry your wardrobe and, and everything block and block the door. So who is going in and coming out? Nobody. Okay, so you know what? Let's go on a break. Well, we have plenty of people attacking you here. When it's we course, come back, we'll, say, we'll tell him your messages. I'm used, used to, to, I'm used to that, back. Yeah.